It was uh, about 23 years ago. Our train was supposed to leave at about uh, 11. And we arrive at the station and we are told that the train is delayed. So we got into the train, got ourselves some chai, and we sat down and we started talking. That's what we did. We talked and we talked and we talked. The first man I uh, ever fell in love with, and I remember I went on, on my first date with him, and just as, you know, he was about to kiss me a crochet on my head. Everybody said it's supposed to be lucky, but it wasn't because it ruined my first kiss completely because, of, you know, I was just so conscious about the, the crochet on my head. 1999, I came to Bombay, a small town, I met a girl. She was an actress, model, and वो मेरे stupid small town jokes पे हंस रही थी, and that was the first time I felt comfortable. It was, it was full moon night and a terrace party, and there was you know a game at that party. It was truth or dare, and there was like a kiss. I went back to college the next day, told my friends that I have met that guy that I have been dreaming about. I was in love with this guy, tall, dark, handsome. Uh, he was a guy who all the girls were after, and he was with me. Very sheepishly, I had you know prepared for it and uh, you know hidden hidden uh, a whole dozen of eggs in a basket, and I said, "Would you like to put all your eggs in one basket?" <laughs> and she just burst out laughing. Then she said, "What kind of bloody proposal is that?" The first thing I would remember about that relationship is the smell of spring in New York. It's a beautiful time in New York, and it was a beautiful time in the relationship. The train got delayed to almost 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. And it was getting cold and, you know, we got a shawl out and we sat there, huddled together. And we made a very beautiful relationship. We met with friends and friends. Those parties, there was fashion bistro in town. There's only one phone booth for all the kids who live in the hostel. And every night, like at 9 o'clock, I used to wait for his call. And I know that he used to get in queue to make that call. And, you know, we would have a little chat. And, you know, I mean, I knew there were people waiting. And it was only that much time that we could really talk to each other. And every little exchange was um, treasured. I was getting up to go and she said, no, just hang on for a bit. And that's what we did. For a short time, we rode together. The short ride was, like, quite beautiful. He was a photographer. I used to take him to these places, which he said, being in the same city, he had sort of never seen before. And we found ourselves in San Francisco, uh, in a very nice winery. And there we shared a very magical evening with a bottle of wine, uh, red wine. As a matter of fact, I've still kept the cork of that wine bottle with me and uh, etched the date on it. and. Uh, Yeah, so we've been married uh, 14 years now and we have a 12-year-old daughter and um, our current status is that we live separately because, you know, we've decided to go our own paths. I was hurt at that time when it didn't work out and we decided to go our ways. I was hurt, I was in pain. For him, because of his past relationships, he, he had a very different um, kind of a lookout. I wasn't sure whether I would see her again. And in that moment, it, fe it felt, I think both of us felt that it would probably be the last time. Because it was my first the heartbreak was, the, like, I mean, you know, because you don't even know that this is what it feels like to have your heart broken. For a long, long time, I kept visualizing this, that I should just bump into him. Well, I also imagined how chic I would be looking, you know, he would regret why he let me go. And I would just go to him and punch him in his nose, like, you know, literally. There is a bit of an anger. There is a bit of an anger. That, okay, I didn't take that first step, so you could take it. There was a fight, a stupid thing. And she had to shoot all night. And she went and shot her. And she's supposed to come and meet me in the morning. But she... Car drive kar rahi thi, she fell asleep and she had an accident and she died. He would sing a song for me. Kishore Kumar's Pal Pal Dil Ke Paas Tum Rehti Ho. And he would sing it like till I get irritated and I didn't like it. But today it 
still brings a smile to my face and I think uh, My daughter, she came across that cork and she looked at it and she asked me what this is. I had absolutely the same feeling describing what that cork was about to her. And she quickly took a picture of it and sent it to her mother, said, see what Papa has kept. <laughs> In the second year of the relationship, when um, it was her birthday, as luck would have it, her best friend's younger brother died tragically. This tragedy for her meant that every time on her birthday, she would remember this. It sort of affected me in a way where I would ensure that on her birthday, I wouldn't fly, I wouldn't do anything dramatic. In the weirdest way of thinking, if something was to happen, that would be an additional burden. And the funny thing is, I continued doing this after the relationship ended. Even if she had moved on, very happy life, I just felt like if I could somehow to the universe do a small part that doesn't add any unhappiness to her, it mattered to me. Very often after that crows have shat on my head and it still makes me smile. People don't understand why. But I actually really enjoy that stupid experience because it reminds me of something so beautiful and a, and a person who I will always value so much and you know. 23 years later, we did get in touch and uh, it was great. I think I'm really glad that I lived that really perfect love story in my teens with him because he was really a nice guy. So I'm glad that he was my boyfriend and I hope he remembers the nice about us, you know, from back then as well. And One thing that I would like really to thank her is uh, that I've, I've begun this journey of introspection. It's grounded me to a large extent. It's grounded me to a large extent. I've completely forgiven you, so you are safe. We can meet again, we can be friends. And I have a lovely life now, which I'm so grateful for. I still love you. Not just for the first person, but with all the relationships I've had, is really a sense of gratitude. Like, beyond a thank you, I can't think of anything else I'd like to say. I got the most out of it, so. Thank God I experienced something which which is absolutely mine. Thank God, uske aakhri char mahine mere saath bhi the. Thank God, that happened and I always smile. I always smile whenever I think about her. It's beautiful when you fall in love and it's horrible when you break up, but I'm not gonna give up. You know, I mean, I'm gonna take that pain. I'm gonna take that hit one more time. I'm all I'm always ready to take that hit.